Steel, the final frontier. These are the chronicles of a nomad CNC. Its continuing mission to make things that no one thought possible, to create new prototypes and products, to timidly go where larger CNCs have gone before. In this new series that we're going to be rolling out over the next few weeks, I'm going to show you how I designed and created these knives using a variety of processes, both manual and digital, but all centered around CNC. This was a challenge handed down to me by our fearless and, well, generally emotionless CEO Robert, and something I had a personal stake in since I was going camping and needed a knife. Now, before I dive into things, I want to say that I am no blade expert, and I know that knives are a massively deep rabbit hole, both from an objective and subjective perspective. Everything from size, shape, metallurgy, materials, aesthetics, there is someone out there with an opinion on all of it. I am discovering all these things for the first time by myself, so I'm sure there are things that other people might do differently, and I'm okay with that. That's part of the learning process that I want to share. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get into how I designed the carbide camp knife. It all starts with CAD, and no, not fusion, I mean cardboard-aided design. Knives are very tactile things, they have to feel good in hand, and that's not something you can determine on a computer screen. I spent a little bit of time one afternoon cutting out some cardboard templates, seeing how I liked their ergonomics, and iterating. The first knife I drew freehand was a little crooked. The handle also wasn't perfectly sized to my hand, so I stretched it out a bit. I refined the shape of the handle so that it would be very positively retained in the hand. This is meant for outdoor use, and I don't want it slipping if it's wet or anything. From prototype 2 to prototype 3, I pushed out the rear of the handle so my pinky wouldn't be slipping off it. Based on aesthetics, I also refined where I wanted my bevels to be. For strength, since I didn't know how good my knife would be, I planned to do a saber grind. This is a blade profile where about half of the blade is left untouched and parallel, and the other half is tapered towards the edge. It requires less material removal and creates a very strong spine. So if my steel selection or heat treatment turned out to be bad, at least I could count on the sheer mass of the blade to provide a little more longevity. On revision 3, I decided that the overall shape of the knife was to my liking, and any other changes could be made as I drew out the profile in Fusion. I brought a picture of my knife into Fusion as a canvas, scaled it appropriately, and started sketching on top of it. Pro tip, include something in the picture for scale. During this transition from cardboard CAD to computer CAD, I eliminated the thumb rise that I had drawn in. I initially thought that having it would help control the knife when cutting or otherwise handling the blade, but I felt it unnecessarily complicated the design and it was very difficult to place in a way that felt natural and comfortable. There were certain segments in the sketch that I wanted to be straight, and I made sure to use my control points to enforce tangency where they met my splines. For your own sanity, you should use the fewest possible number of control points to define the profile that you want. I extruded this profile out and started adding in features like pinholes, weight reduction cavities, and the primary bevel. The bevel is a sweep operation along the outer edge of the blade. The plunge line is a loft feature pulled along a sketched rail. NYC CNC has a good video about this technique that I'll link below. I also wanted to create a swedge or false edge on the spine of the blade. This material removal helps improve maneuverability of the blade if you're cutting near the point, and it also reduces mass out front. This required another loft, but first I needed a rail that followed the spine of the blade. So I drew in my grind line, created another sketch, and projected that grind line to the surface of the spine. This gave me the curves I needed to control the loft. Next, I mirrored my original body to make the entire blade, since up to this point I'd only been creating features for half a knife. I'll note here that I'm designing in the edge to have a thickness of about 20 thou or half a millimeter. Forming the bevels while leaving a perfectly consistent edge thickness is something I'm more than happy to let a CNC do, because I have no experience doing it by hand. This is the only way for me to make the knife I want without potentially scrapping a ton of practice parts. Next, I modeled in a choil, some jimping, and some subtle filleting to break the edges. I isolated a portion of my knife's profile and extruded it out to become a knife scale. Here, I ended up throwing a bunch of extruded cuts through the body to shape it, and then capped it off by applying some fillets. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it does thin out where I want it to for a decent feel in hand. I 3D printed these scales to confirm that.
The rest of the knife modeling process is just adding in some refinements, including accommodations for fastening hardware, lanyards, etc. Now, as much as I'd love to just slap a plate of steel on my Nomad and hog through it, that would be both a waste of end mills and my time. 2D contour operations in steel are extremely demanding from a rigidity and torque perspective. I could do it on the Nomad, but it would take a lot of time. This is not a battle worth picking on a desktop CNC if you can avoid it, but if I can acquire some blanks that are already cut to near net shape, that would dramatically reduce my time investment in the project. And you know what? There is a perfect machine for doing just that, a water jet. Over in Illinois, Ed Ford has a Protomax water jet that we use for prototyping and one-off parts here at Carbide. He agreed to knock out a couple knife blanks for me, so I sent him a file where the profile of the blade was offset outward by one millimeter. I didn't know what the kerf of the water jet would be, so I wanted to make sure I ended up with extra material rather than not enough material. I would later realize that dealing with the water jet's kerf required much less margin than I expected, so I could have just had the blanks cut much closer to net shape and reduced my machining time. That's just part of the learning process. Water jetting is a very common process in manufacturing, and unless you live in the middle of nowhere, you should be within driving distance of someone that has one. If you have any intention of manufacturing knives, you should absolutely befriend that person or company. The cost of cutting out a knife blank should only be a couple dollars a piece, probably around 10, maybe cheaper, but definitely under 20 bucks. And it is 100% worth it for the time savings. Just be sure that your blanks are removed and dried as quickly as possible. I'm using O1 tool steel for my knives, and post water jetting, it developed surface rust very quickly. Dry them off, apply a little rust preventative, and get to machining your knife as quickly as possible. That step, however, will come later on in this series. We have a lot of ground to cover before we arrive at a finished knife, so stay tuned for future videos covering the entire process. Everything from the fixture plate I designed to machining G10 handles to forming Kydex sheaths is coming up soon on the Carbide 3D channel. Until the next episode though, good luck and have fun machining your own projects, folks.